this is Jade the Stone, and welcome to Speed Articles, where I talk about a piece of media that I like and draw some fan art for it. After perusing Netflix last week, I came across a new animated series produced by DreamWorks and animated by Studio Mir of Legend of Korra and Voltron fame. I watched the first episode and went, well, I guess this is what I'm going to do with the rest of my day. And I binged the entire series in one go. This series is called Kipo and the Age of Wonder Beasts, and it includes well-written character interactions and an enthralling world, the kind of stellar animation you'd come to expect from Studio Mir, and one of the most creative soundtracks and use of music I've seen in a TV show outside of musicals. Kipo and the Age of Wonder Beasts takes place about 200 years in the future in a post-apocalyptic Earth, where the world is overrun by new mutated animals and creatures called mutes. Flowers, trees, and plants have all grown to massive size, many animals have gained extra eyes or limbs, and some groups of species have even gained sentience and formed societies. Meanwhile, humans have largely gone to live underground in burrows, leaving a scant few surface dwellers to scavenge the mutated earth. The world of Kipo is just fascinating to watch because it pairs these beautiful and interesting landscapes with the sad and forgotten remains of what was once human civilization. Our main cast includes a couple of surface humans, a couple of mutes, and the titular character Kipo who is a burrow girl that found herself on the surface and is trying to find her way home. The show has her meeting up with her four companions and sees her experiencing the various wonders and dangers of the surface world. It's your classic fish out of water scenario, but I think it balances her missteps with her joy of experiencing a new place quite well. The world she finds herself in is very dangerous and many mutes do not like humans or even each other. The various animals have all developed their own civilizations and ways of doing things. For instance, you have uh, bipedal talking frogs who have formed a mob-like society. Then there are cats living in the woods and are an odd mix of lumberjacks with a hint of viking intensity to them. And then there are wolves who are both dangerous pack hunters and sophisticated astronomers. They almost feel like races in a D&D campaign. They're all doing their own thing and have their own works, and they have some modicum of interaction with each other, but it's not always friendly. Then you have Kipo, who is trying to find her way back home, and decides to try to talk to these various races and species, and is constantly working to have everyone get along. She wants to help everyone, and pushes for everyone to help each other, in a world that isn't always as friendly as she is. And I find that a very endearing and charming thing about her character. As a foil to Kipo's outgoing and bright-eyed personality, you've got what came to be my favorite character of the series, Wolf. Wolf is a surface world girl who has had to survive on her own for much of her life. She's an angry, distrustful, and dangerous girl who believes that everyone should look out only for themselves. I think what elevates Wolf from just a good opposite to Kipo is when they really delve into her past and explore some of the things she's gone through that have developed this cold and untrusting personality. She's dealt with a lot of abuse and betrayal, and it shows in her reactions to things throughout the events of the show. Even when she has a good emotional breakthrough midway through the series, it's not like everything is suddenly okay for her, because a lot of her problems run deep and the show does a good job of appropriately addressing that. A lot of Wolf's story really hit me hard and I really started feeling for her. On top of that, she's just kind of this awesome, badass character. Intense backstories and character development aside, the interactions between Kipo and Wolf are great. They have a fantastic character dynamic because whereas Kipo is always pushing to talk to people and work things out civilly, you've got Wolf who's had it very rough and thinks you can't be friends with anyone on the surface. 
The show balances it in a way where both Kipo's and Wolf's points of view have merit in certain situations. And even when they disagree, the two still come to love and respect one another. Things do often work out for Kipo when she talks to others, and she is even able to change people's minds with her empathetic personality. But there are also instances where Wolf's warnings of the dangers of the world do need to be heeded, especially when the villains are involved. Which brings me to the only thing that I was disappointed about in the series, and that is the main antagonist, Scarlemagne. Throughout the show, before you see him, the characters shudder at the thought of him. Many are reluctant to even say his name. He is built up as this crazy, intimidating, and dangerous villain. Based on the way he was talked about, I was expecting some Fire Lord, Ozai, Voldemort, Sauron level intensity. And yet, when you actually meet Scarlemagne, he's just not any of those things. I swear, when he first appeared, I wasn't even sure it was him. I thought, this can't be him, he must be some henchman or something. But as the scene went on, it slowly dawned on me that this was our main villain. He's just kind of this weird and boring guy. I get the feeling that there may be more to him based on some hints that have been made in the show, but I don't know. Scarlemagne as he is now failed entirely to elicit the response that I feel was intended. He's not very intimidating at all, and in fact, he's almost goofy and just terribly bland for a main antagonist. Even his bad guy agenda is the incredibly cliche, pit people against each other through fear and I come out on top type of master plan. Luckily, that is the only thing that seems to be unoriginal and boring in an otherwise wildly creative and beautiful series. What's on Netflix so far is 10 episodes, and it feels like there will be more stuff from here on out. I'm definitely into it and into watching more. I would love to see more Wolf because she is so awesome. And I'd love to see more of the world because it's super interesting. And I like how everything has come together in the series so far. But before I go and finish up this review and this drawing, I'd like to talk about the final piece of the show that just brought everything together. The icing on the cake, the cherry on top. And that is the music. This series does an amazing job of utilizing its soundtrack to the fullest. It has some of the most eclectic mix of music that I've heard in a piece of media. Going from twinkling music box songs, to a rap about the universe and stars, to percussion-based rhythmic music, to something incorporating banjos, to hip-hop, and everything in between. This show's soundtrack has such an odd range of styles, and yet it all somehow makes sense in the context of the scene or for the character that it is representing at the moment. What I love most about it is its blend of diegetic music with its musical score. Diegetic music is music in a piece of media that is part of the fictional setting and is either performed or heard by the characters. It is the in-universe music, as opposed to the underscore which can only be heard or understood by the viewer. There are many times in the series where the characters themselves are singing songs. Kipo herself is a very musical person, and she uses music to navigate her way through the world and through her interactions with others. Another very musical character in the series and one of Kipo's travel companions is Benson, who is often seen with headphones on and listening to music. What I think is fascinating about the music in the show is that there will be times where you are bopping along to a song thinking it's part of the epic soundtrack, and then you realize that it's a song that is playing on Benson's headphones. At times he'll even say something like, I need a good soundtrack for this, and he'll play a song which then becomes our background music for the scene. The closest thing that I've seen to this technique is in Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, since at times the music in that film is coming from the main character's headphones. 
But if anything, Kipo in the Age of Wonder Beasts blends the diegetic and non-diegetic music even further by making the viewer uncertain at times whether or not this is music that only you can hear or one that the characters themselves are also privy to. It's the first time outside of straight up musicals that I've seen the soundtrack break the fourth wall. And what's great about this is that instead of breaking the reality of the scene, it instead only serves to bring the viewer further into the show. I rarely pay much attention to the soundtrack of a piece of storytelling media, outside of musicals or music videos, of course. But Kipo's soundtrack is something else entirely, and it almost feels like it's in its own category. The music really grabs your attention while aiding to the overall feel and atmosphere of the show, even adding to the personality of the characters. They're enjoying the soundtrack just as much as you are. And that's a really clever way to make the characters feel more real and relatable. You can bet that I listened to the soundtrack on repeat while I was drawing this piece of artwork. Because it's just fun and fantastic to listen to. I definitely recommend this show, and if you decide to give it a watch, keep your ears open as well. And with that, I hope you enjoyed this blend of TV show review and speed drawing. If you liked what you saw and you're interested in seeing more of this kind of video, hit the like button. And if you have any requests or questions about other shows that you'd like to see me talk about or draw some fan art for, please write that down in the comments. If you want to see the artwork that I did for this review, I put a link to the artwork in the description. Thanks for watching and have a great day!